when we set out to make the ID wallet, we really wanted it to be the world like leading best case example of how intuitive and fun and simple an ID wallet can be, right? Because identity is a scary, complex thing. Uh, it Let's not make the end user experience scary and complex as well with that. Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 18 of the Global ID Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about ID wallets and why they're so pivotal to our long-term vision for identity. Uh, ID wallets is probably something that most people are not really familiar with yet in a digital sense for their everyday lives. Um, but luckily, today we have Global ID product marketing manager, Justin Downey with us. And, you know, he's been leading the initiative at Global ID for ID wallets. And uh, we actually have a big release coming up in about a month. So we're really excited to sort of dig into all of that. Justin, do you want to start by just introducing yourself? Yeah, first off, Alec, thank you for having me on my first ever podcast. So a little nervous, a little excited. Um, I am a true Florida man, born and raised here in uh, beautiful Tampa Bay, pre Tom Brady been here for a while. Um, I live here with my family and you also notice uh, we, my black lab is in the corner. She may bark from time to time. Teddy, don't be alarmed. Um, yeah, I um, kind of just sharing a bit how I ended up at Global ID kind of started uh, many years back with the launch of the iPhone. Uh, I literally stayed up to five in the morning and I watched that keynote over and over again and knew that I wanted to be a part of making that kind of magic possible in technology. Um, and was really lucky to end up in education marketing, evangelizing the impact technology can make in higher education. Um, and in that role, I was lucky to work with some awesome product visionaries and learn that I wanted to get my hands dirty in product. Uh, I went into product management. So I worked at a company here in Tampa, a really small team uh, that was working on software experience by you know millions of people um, in the cruise industry. So pre-COVID, was pretty lucky to, to get to live aboard some cruise ships, do a little bit of traveling, which was awesome. Um, and then uh, a really great friend of mine and someone I admire reached out to me and said, hey, we're building the future of identity at Global ID. Do you want to be a part of this? Uh, and uh, it was hard to say no. So I, I, I said yes and uh, officially joined the, the product marketing team and now get to be talking to the lovely Alec here. Awesome. Well, it's amazing to have you, Justin. Appreciate um, it. You know, I think a lot of what you're going to be talking about today is, is the solution in terms of global ID, in terms of the ID wallet, but why don't we start with with the problem, right? Because there, there is this general problem with identity um, online today. Um, do, do you, do you want to explain, you know, like like where the big issues are? Oh my gosh, so many, so many. Um, I mean, I think especially in the past couple of years with everyone like rapidly moving towards digital transformation, we've noticed increases in breaches, you know, um, PII constantly compromised. Um, there's frustration from users because the measures that companies put in place are often at a worst user experience. <laughs> um, there's a lot of fragmentation. There's a lot of confusion. Um, and ultimately, it's it's kind of a lose, 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 right? Like it's a lose for the issuers, uh, which, you know, government agencies putting out these credentials. It's a lose for the verifiers or the businesses trying to uh verify its users and make sure they have the valid credentials and identities. And then it's a lose for us trying to get things done out in the world. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, there's certainly a lot of opportunity to, uh, to, to improve for sure. Got it. And, you know, I, I think also it's a lot of people don't generally think about digital identity, right? They're, they're thinking yep. about more the destination than sort of the process of, of getting there. Um, identity is usually sort of an afterthought. It's like, okay, I have to go to the airport. All right, I need my passport, obviously. Um, you know, I, I think one of the great things that your team has has done is, is you know, along with Nikhil and Trey, um, you have this framework called the trust triangle, um, which for me has been such a great way to just break down exactly, you know, what identity is and, and how it works mechanically. Um, do, do you want to talk a little bit about how the trust triangle explains identity? A hundred percent. Yeah. I wish I had a whiteboard, but I'll do the, 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 the hand sign here. Um, so with the trust triangle, we've got verifiers, holders, and issuers. 
So we can think of an issuer as you know, the, the government agency who's going out and saying, all right, here's your ID. You are in fact Alec, right? I'm going to give this to you. Um, and then you can think of the verifier as being the convenience store outside your house the, that, uh, you know, you want to go buy a lottery ticket at, right? Um, and then the holder would be you, right? So you're actually holding that credential, that ID that says, hey, I'm over 18. I can buy a lottery ticket. Um, and, you know, for many, many years, that experience kind of has remained unchanged. Um, and it's just recently companies have started looking at, okay, how do we take that from the, you know, kind of old school analog realm to digital identity? Um, and that's really the, the space that we're uh, playing in. You mentioned the holder um, as part of the trust triangle. That, that, that's where the, the ID wallet is, right? Yeah, so that's what I am most passionate about uh, is the holder experience, right? So that is, you know, my my friends, my family, people I interact with, like ultimately that is the front and facing experience that they're going to touch and feel. And so I really want to make sure that's incredible. Um, and that's where you end up storing your credentials, right? So the issuer will go and give you your driver's license or, you know, your car insurance credential, whatever it may be. And you're going to hold that or store that in your wallet, and then you're ultimately gonna use that with verifiers. Um, so when we set out to make the ID wallet, we really wanted it to be the world like leading best case example of how intuitive and fun and simple an ID wallet can be, right? Because identity is a scary, complex thing. Uh, it Let's not make the end user experience scary and complex as well with that. Sure. I, I mean, everything's got to be as easy as possible, right? Especially online. Um, you know, the thing with the, the ID wallet is that it is this sort of brand new concept, right? Um, I mean, I think people these days are a lot more familiar with, with payment wallets, something like Apple Pay, um, which even, you know, I, I know on the American side, we, we've sort of been late to that bus. I, I remember being in Europe a few years ago and everyone was sort of paying for things with their phone already. And I'm sure China's been been way ahead. Um, you know, more recently, we've seen sort of these COVID credential wallets, which start to feel more like ID wallets. Um, but we really haven't had this like actual ID wallet yet. I mean, I know sort of Apple has been working on that project. You know, they've been working with DMV so that you can have your driver's license in your wallet. Um, how does sort of global IDs approach to, to, to ID wallets differ from, you know, all the other sort of ideas that are out there right now? Yeah. I'm going to, do you mind if I answer that in two parts? So yeah. I think the the first part I might just touch on is our competitors, right? Then the, where we see the market. And then to your second point, where global ID fits in that market and our unique differentiation. Sure. Um, so I'm happy you brought up Apple. I think, you know, when Apple enters a space, awareness for that market grows. Um, I remember when Apple Music uh, launched in 2015 and a lot of, you know, industry analysts and people were saying, oh, this is going to hurt Spotify. This is going to hurt Pandora. A rising tide lifts all boats. It actually ended up increasing engagement and awareness for a lot of the competitors in the space. Um, and I think that's what's going to end up happening with the ID wallet space. And we're already seeing that now. So you've got Microsoft, Okta, all these huge companies that are generating awareness. Uh, and, you know, we're excited about that because means we're going to have more competitors, which means we're going to be better and they're going to be better. Um, and it also means more people are going to be aware of the, the problems and the solutions that an ID wallet can solve. So um, that is something I'm, I, I think counterintuitively I'm excited about. Um, and then in terms of our unique differentiation as Global ID and the approach we're taking, everything we do is built around protecting our users' privacy and respecting their, their data and never, ever compromising on that. Like it is so fundamental from, you know, the way the company is structured, our financial, everything is like, we will not compromise on this period. Um, and I think that is very, very unique in the market. Um, and, you know, we also have just a world-class team that has been working on this problem like 10 years ago, like when no one was talking about it. Now some people are talking about it. Seven, six years ago, no one was talking about it, uh, except for some of the really awesome folks that we, you know, we've had here at Global ID. So um, with that industry expertise, we, we kind of do have a head start um, and really getting 
solutions that are going to solve problems for users today, right? Like the real world kind of like dirty reality of where identity is. And at the same time, building these awesome solutions that are going to be, you know, world-class and incredible in the next couple of years. Um, and, you know, the last thing I'll say too is we, I kind of like to think of us as like the rebel alliance, you know, <laughs> like there's all these big giant monolithic, you know, companies. Um, and sometimes you want to have like the underdog that you believe in and that you can, can trust and doesn't have like this scary intentions going on behind the curtain. And I definitely think that's, that's where we are as, as a company. And that's why users continue to trust us and want to work with us. So speaking of big tech, right. And, and because, you know, you're, you're focusing on these values of, of, of privacy and insecurity and data ownership for, for the user. Um, it, Apple has also, you know, had this sort of privacy focus, you know, and I guess compared to say like a Google or Facebook, they're more of a, a hardware sort of company or, you know, they have these marketplaces and so they're far less reliant on, you know, specific user data. Um, how, how would you contrast sort of Global ID's approach to privacy versus Apple's? Yeah, again, to the point of awareness, I think Apple has educated users on why they should care about their privacy. Uh, yeah. Like people didn't even, like, you know, the single sign-in option before Apple sign on, people were like, oh, I'll just use XYZ company single sign-on, not realizing they're giving all this data away when they do that, right? Um, so I, I'm, I'm really happy that we have a company of that size that is boosting awareness. Um, I also think, you know, Apple is great if you're in that ecosystem, right? Um, but if you're outside of that ecosystem, you know, there is no Apple wallet experience on an Android device, for example, right? And so one of the things that we're, we're, we're bringing that privacy piece, but we're also bringing that openness and that interoperability that a lot of our users care about. Um, that's pretty unique. Um, and then also we, you know, when we say trust us, people can really trust us because there are no, we don't have our hands in any other cookie jar, right? There's no, there's no ulterior motives going on. Um, and the, the last thing I'll say on it is that, you know, we built our application, our architecture, everything from the ground up to have these, you know, privacy focused principles in mind, again, when no one else is really thinking about it. So I think even if you were to look under the hood, there are certain technical choices that we've made that are unique, even, you know, amongst the, the big guys. Well, oh, I'm sold. <laughs> I'll send you the um, download link after this. So. <laughs> yeah, let's let's get to some of the more specifics um, of the ID wallet, and and since because this release is is coming soon, um, do you want to give us a sense of of you know what that initial release will look like? Like, what will we be able to do? Uh, you know, with this new feature? Absolutely. So. The first thing you're going to notice is a brand new UI and UX. Uh, this is the platform that we hope to build the next two, three years on. Um, so you're, you're going to see improvements, but you're not going to see fundamental changes like what we're about to announce. Um, so that, that's, you know, from top to bottom, your, your, the experience that you go in uh, to the ID wallet will, will be just revitalized, these beautiful, clean designs. You know, I like to think of it as credentials that you want to show off. Right, like you're literally like, hey, check this thing out. Like this, this is beautiful. This is awesome. Something you're proud to present, present and use. Um, we also, again, you know, talking about the problems of identity today and meeting users where they're at. A lot of people hate filling out online forms. <laughs> it's a, it's a common problem, and so I don't know my driver's license number. I don't know if you do, but you're constantly going and you know looking for it or taking a picture and referencing in your camera roll. Um, if you have your verified credential driver's license, yes, you can use it as a verified credential and all those awesome things. But if you also just want to copy your driver's license number and paste it into a form, you can do that. And hopefully in a couple of years, you'll never have to do that. But for right now, that feature is there. Um, if you want to share these credentials easily, right, without having to take a screenshot and do all these like kind of, you know, haphazard hacks that people are doing today, you can do that. You can share a credential uh, send it via message, via an email, um, you know, again, all, all these things that are solving the problems of today while making sure we're, we're building for the future. Um, and I, if, if we have time, I'm happy to also talk about what that future state looks like. Before we get to that future yeah. state, though, um, I mean, the, the one thing that you talked about, you know, being able to, to share your driver's license, I'd, I'd, 
I had just run into this problem myself where, you know, we had booked an Airbnb. It was for this bachelor party or whatever. And, you know, a couple days before our reservation was supposed to start, the owner messages us and she's like, oh, by the way, I have this policy. I need uh, a copy of everyone's ID. And, you know, this really sort of, I think, points to the heart of some the problem of identity right now during this transition from the analog to digital world. You know, we're, we're still just taking photos of our driver's license and, and giving it, you know, to whoever. Right. And I mean, in this case, you know, I trust this person. The host was great. Our stay was great. Um, but who knows? She now has a photo of my ID and she could have it forever. You know, who knows, you know, what's going to happen with that. And it's sort of that like loss of control over your data and your identity, um, especially as more of our lives go digital as it's already had, especially with, you know, the most recent pandemic um, that's still ongoing. Uh, you know, the, the stakes are only going to get higher, right? And I, I think what's really cool about this version of, you know, your ID wallet is that you only have to verify something like your driver's license once, right? And yep. now you can reuse that credential everywhere else, right? Versus the sort of right now, basically every product or service you want to access, you have to sort of redundantly give away your data all over again. And, and that and hope they don't mess it up, right? Hope they don't get hacked or yeah, a hundred percent. I I just remember the moment I was <clears throat> texting a photo of my license to this person, and I was like, oh, I I wish we had the ID wallet right now. That is that is a perfect segue. Yeah. So um, your exact use case is the reason why we built a feature called Selective Share that is on our roadmap, uh, and you know we're we're planning on launching this year, um, and. Again, right now, uh, that that person probably wouldn't accept a verified credential, right? Um, but what they would accept is a um, an image of your ID with only the information they need, right? So if they only need your date of birth, instead of giving them your address and your driver's license number, we redact that. Uh, and instead of giving them a copy of your driver's license that lives forever, and you know whoever else they share it with, you give them a link and you tell them how long they have access to that link. Um, and you know, in a couple of years time, hopefully we get to deprecate that feature because everyone's accepting verified credentials. But again, today it will solve that exact problem. So I'm, I'm really happy you brought that up because that is a perfect use case of what the ID wallet will be able to solve. You've dropped this term verified credential a couple of times now, which makes sense because you're an identity nerd. Um, the best yeah. kind, of course. Um, yep. but do, would you like to educate our audience on, on what a verified credential is? Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's a fun one and I, I'm probably not the, the, there's probably a better wiki how on explaining it, but it's, it's really a piece of technology that ensures you have provable digital representation. Um, and so, you know, right now when I go and get my driver's license, I'm, I'm given like a physical card, right? Um, but imagine using technology like, you know, zero knowledge proofs and um, uh, DIDs, you would be able to moment to moment to moment have a credential that's issued by a trusted issuer like the DMV that is valid in real time um, and that I own fully, right? And that I can then take with me and, and, and share to you. So to, to, try, to try and simplify that a little bit better, um, right now, a lot of our identity is not actually owned by us. It's, it's owned by either issuers or these other companies. With a verified credential, you get to own that credential fully. So if you wanted to like, for example, leave Global ID and go to another identity wallet, you can do that because this is your verified credential. It's, it's, not, uh, you know, it's not something that is proprietary to any one company or issuer. Um, and I think that's a pretty you know, you profound benefit that I'm excited about in terms of you know, giving the power back to the people around their identity and making sure people own their identity instead of being owned by their identity by big companies. Got it. Got it. So, so it sounds like a tool um, that helps us solve a lot of identity needs um, while being sort of built uh, in a very user centric way. Um, absolutely. You know, and that, the power away from the organization back to the individual. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, whatever the technology is as a user, all you care about is what is that experience for me? And it, it'll, it will be simpler. Right. You don't have to worry if you if you lose your physical wallet, 
you better take off the weekend and, and find them all. If you lose your digital wallet with your verified credentials, you know, get a new phone, log into your account, everything's right there, right? So I think the benefits ultimately are what people are going to care about. The technology just happens to be a, a new breakthrough that's going to allow us to, you know, provide those benefits and still ensure your privacy is not sold to, you know, some big company. Got it. And, and, and you know, what I think is so exciting about these technologies um, is that the ultimate goal is for them to be sort of like international standards, right? Um, sort of like how the internet works today with like HTTP or email or whatever. Um, so it's not like any one company sort of owning the proprietary technology. Um, anyone's going to be able to sort of build on these technologies. Um, your identity will be portable. It can interoperate with different systems. As Justin mentioned, you know, if you don't like our wallet because it's no longer best in class, you can take your identity and and move it to a better better wallet, right? Yep. Um, but that's also why, Justin, that, you know, your ID, ID wallet will be best in class. Am I right? It keeps us honest, right? I mean, I, I don't want to be the company that people are forced to use, right? Like, no matter how bad your experience at the DMV is, you're waiting in that line because you need that thing. And there are some companies that have taken that approach of like, oh, we don't have to care about a great user experience because they need us. They have to go through us. We don't want to be that company. We want to be kept honest by making sure it's as easy as possible for a customer to leave, which means that we have to work our butts off every single day to deliver the best experience so they choose to stay. Um, and, I, and I like that approach. That's, that's the world that I want to live in. With, with Global ID, ultimately, it's, it's, it's always about the user first. You know, the user controls their identity, the user controls their data, and the user will control their ID wallet. Um, so, you know, you've already gotten a little futury with this whole verifiable credentials thing, very exciting. Um, do you want to give us sort of a hint of of where we're going? Because this is sort of a big ask, right? You know, um, having someone download an app and go through the homework of uploading, you know, their passport or their driver's license, you know, what's the sort of long-term ROI for, for, for jumping through these hoops and, you know, digitizing these things within an ID wallet? Yeah, great question. You know, ultimately, I I really do see a future where we don't have to carry around a physical wallet, which for me is really exciting as a, you know, team minimalist here, don't want to carry around stuff. Um, but even, you know, deeper than that, we're working towards a future where the way you use digital identity online and use your identity in the physical world are one and the same, right? Like, the way I would go and prove that I'm 18 to buy a lottery ticket would be the exact same way I would go and prove to, you know, buy that lottery ticket online. Um, I would have the same, the same experience, same app, same UI, um, and ultimately the same verified credential being accepted. Um, and so, you know, for me, it's going to, it's going to mean that I get to save time. Uh, I, you know, have less frustrations carrying around and man managing multiple applications and multiple, you know, physical representations of my identity. Um, and I'm going to get peace of mind because I'm going to know that the team at, at Global ID is working their butts off to give me the safest possible wallet. And this technology is the safest way for me to go about using my identity. Right. Um, I also think, you know, to your point of the, your Airbnb example, right? Like you shouldn't have to give away so much of your identity just to do something as simple as staying in an Airbnb. Right. So we want you to get to do the things you want to do in your life without giving away, you know, all your information. And again, with these verified credentials being accepted, you wouldn't even have to do the selective share that we talked about where they can see some of your information. They wouldn't see any of it, right? All they would get is a green check, yes or no, this is Alec, right? Um, so ultimately, it'll, it will be the, the ultimate privacy focus solution. Right. For, for users, they get to own their identity. They get yep. to own their credentials. It's not redundantly stored all over the yep. place like it is today. Um, and, you know, I think in the context of, of global IDs, like larger vision for really just flipping identity on its head in terms of how it works today, um, it is sort of a chicken and an egg problem, right? Between the, the ID wallet and, you know, businesses who are interested in, in, in this new vision, you know, we need to be able to provide customers with the best experience as well. Um, customers as in end users, as well as sort of these businesses, you know, who are looking to adopt 
these new frameworks, right? And at the end, and they really do go hand in hand. 100%. And, and just to add to that real quick, the ID wallet solution is a win, 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 right? When I go to Costco and buy toilet paper, um, part of the cost that I'm paying is fraud and, you know, cybersecurity insurance and all these things. If everyone is using verified credentials, guess what? The verifier of the business has less overhead. It costs them less. So that means I get to get my goods for less. It means that I don't have to you know, do all this friction of verifying who I am. So I'm happy. The business is happy. The issuer is happy. It's, it's really a, a win-win-win all around. And there's not too many things in tech and in the world where you get to have those win-win-wins. So uh, I'm, I'm particularly excited about the technology. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, every company and every business these days they're also identity companies, right? And so exactly you know, yep. whatever we can do to sort of grease the wheels to to this new this new chapter, um, it's going to be good for everyone. Hundred percent, yeah. Justin, um, it's been a pleasure. Do you, do you have any final thoughts? Any parting thoughts? Wow, that flew by. First podcast <laughs> goes by fast. Um, you know, I'll just say to. I feel like whoever's watching this, most likely you are have been following Global ID for a while. And uh, I just acknowledge you and say thank you because I, really we wouldn't be where we're at today without the support of our incredible community. Uh, it's it's really what like at least fuels me. I constantly am looking at reviews and tweets of people that are passionate about the product and you know believe in this future because we cannot do it alone. Um, so ultimately, I just want to end on on that acknowledgement, right? Like we hear you, we see you. Um, and ultimately we're working hard every day to build this future for you. And we appreciate the support and Alec, thank you for having me on. This was, this was awesome. Well said. And thank you, Justin. It's been a pleasure. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. All right, everyone. We'll see you on the next one.